Captain Mike's Rigging Station. Powered by Florida Sport Fishing TV. What's up, guys? I'm Captain Mike, and welcome to my rigging station. Right here, this is where it all happens. In preparation of every episode of Florida Sport Fishing TV, we spend a ton of time down here in this rigging station because I'll tell you what, preparation is vital to your success on the water. I tell you this every week, and I'm going to drill it into your head. We've got an awesome show coming up. We're prepping to film an offshore grouper snapper show. Here it is, wintertime in the Florida Keys. It's a great time to get out there and target a variety of different bottom fish. Uh, the water temps are falling. You know, we've got a little bit of shaky weather, which again, really sets the stage potentially sets the stage for some really exciting reef and wreck fishing. So as I get ready for this show, you know, I'm rigging a lot of different rods, a lot of different classes of tackle, because I just don't know what I'm going to encounter, right? I don't know what the current's going to be like. I'm not exactly sure what depth I'm going to end up in. I certainly have a plan in mind, but again, I've got to roll with the punches. But one thing that caught my attention that I really wanted to share with you is a fishing line right? Seems so simple. But as I'm rigging these different rods and these different classes, you know, some of them have braid, some of them have mono, some of them have a combination of braid with a mono leader or braid with a fluorocarbon leader. And I really feel like there's a lot of info out there that needs to be shared that I know can help you because there's still a lot of confusion as to when I should use what and why. It all boils down to your fishing line. That's the only thing connecting you to your catch. So I wanted to share my logic and what I'm thinking when it comes to fishing line because I go through a lot of it. I fish a lot, not only with filming Florida Sport Fishing TV and of course Captain Mike's Rigging Station, we also do uh, a lot of these all-inclusive VIP fishing courses where I'm taking guys out there, I'm teaching them how to wahoo fish, I'm teaching them how to wreck fish, shortening that learning curve. And that's exactly what I wanna do with you as well. I really want to help you be a more successful angler. So first, let's first talk about the difference between monofilament fishing line and fluorocarbon leader. Cause this is perhaps one of the biggest, I don't want to say debates, but one of the biggest confusions is what really is the difference between monofilament line and fluorocarbon leader? Well, let me help you understand the pros and cons of each. Monofilament is softer, softer than fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is more dense, okay, which means that it's going to sink slowly through the water column, whereas monofilament tends to suspend in the water column. If I'm trying to get baits on or near the bottom, certainly I don't want a line that floats, I want a line that slowly sinks. So fluorocarbon would be a great option in that scenario. Monofilament, as I mentioned earlier, because it's softer, is a great choice for spooling reels. A lot of guys say, well, how come you don't spool everything with fluorocarbon? Well, that's because it's stiffer. So mono is a better choice for spooling your reels because you get better castability, okay? And it's, of course, more affordable. Fluorocarbon, because it's more dense, that like we talked about earlier, it's also more abrasion resistant. And that means it's perfect for leader material. If you're bottom fishing for snappers, groupers, if you're backcountry fishing for snook, redfish, mm -hmm. trout, you know, all of these different venues have submerged, you know, obstructions and wreckage and reef and rubble. And having that abrasion resistance is a really big benefit. Monofilament, we're gonna go back to that, comes in a lot of different line colors, whereas fluorocarbon leader is typically clear or maybe pink. Thickness, pound for pound, the same pound test, 
fluorocarbon is going to be a little bit thinner than monofilament. So again, another good advantage because I can get away with a little bit of a thicker or a heavier pound test in the same class. So a lot of times, like on our bottom fishing rods, rather than fishing 40 pound mono leader, I'll fish 40 pound fluorocarbon leader and I'm getting away with the same strength, but it's a little thinner, so it's a little stealthier. And I should also mention one other very important factor. Monofilament is stretchier. It's more elastic, okay? It's stretchier than fluorocarbon because, and it all makes sense, right? Listen, remember what we said, fluorocarbon is more dense, right? So it's not gonna stretch as much as a typical monofilament will stretch, which is another advantage to the mono for spooling your reels, because if you're targeting fish that jump, tarpon, dolphin, sailfish, anything that jumps, you're gonna want a monofilament as a running line. But for the leader itself, which may range in length from six feet to, 50 feet, I'm gonna want the fluorocarbon. Hey guys, I'm Captain Mike and welcome to my rigging station. You've asked over and over, here's the answer. Dubro fishing, four different styles of rod and reel holder mounts for every application. Their ingenious lure and leader keeper system is perfect, either permanently mounted or portable. It keeps everything I need right at my fingertips so I can focus on staying hooked up. Listen, I count on Dubro products, so should you. Check out their full line of innovative gear at DubroFishing.com. For over 80 years, Furuno Innovations have helped more fishermen find and catch more fish than any other brand. And we're raising the bar again with Navnet TZ Touch 3's new PBG and Fish It Drift It technologies. Build your own three dimensional shaded relief charts to find trophy fish others have missed. Perform accurate drifts the first time, every time. Be the one everyone follows. When you're serious about fishing, lead the way and get serious with Furuno. Chaos. Gear matters. Oh my God! Chaos. Gear matters. Shop online or visit our new superstore for everything fishing. Deep Glow outshines the competition. With a robust housing, durable glass dome, and stainless steel hardware, Deep Glow lights are the toughest, brightest, and easiest to install. Throw them in, plug them in, and let the show begin. I've literally created my own feeding frenzy. Residential or commercial, one or 50 lights, Deep Glow increases property values, creates loyal customers to waterfront businesses, and provides years of trouble-free service. Tell them Captain Mike sent you and receive a free timer. These are just my light tackle trolling reels. I also use these kite fishing. Uh, they're Talicas, Shimano Talicas, and we've got them spooled with a high-vis diamond line. A orange crush is the color of this line, but it's high-vis, so when I'm trolling or kite fishing, I could see my line really, really well. But I don't want the fish to see that same high vis line. I want to be stealthy, so I rig all of my trolling lures and all of my leaders are clear. Moving from there, you know, some light duty bottom fishing outfits, 20 pound test. This is where I'm gonna turn to something like an offshore blue. Now, in this particular case, you can see I don't have the high vis line. It's a Shimano Torium 16. It's a little workhorse. I use this bottom fishing a lot. Visibility matters when I'm targeting snapper in clear water on reefs or around wrecks. So I go with a natural color, something that blends into the environment. Just another one of many applications where we're using the monofilament. And we're gonna talk a lot about braid too in a minute, but I still wanna discuss the mono. Again, more sailfish rods, kite fishing rods, light tackle trolling rods rigged with a high vis line. And then there's scenarios. Look, here's a scenario. A light tackle spinner, really, really light, okay? And I'm gonna use this maybe backcountry fishing, 
super clear 12 pound mono. I might use this yellowtail fishing 12 pound mono, super clear. Again, incredibly stealthy. This is on a Stratic 4000, a Shimano spinner. Perfect little combo matched to the Chaos Gold seven foot, six inch, 12 to 17 pound spinner. Uh, but the, the line, again, that's what matters. It's just that 12 pound super clear. Really, really, Stealthy, but also very strong. But like I said, I'm gonna finish it off with a fluorocarbon leader, okay? Because I want that extra abrasion resistance. I want that extra stealth. And I carry a lot of fluorocarbon. I carry 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound. You could see all of the different spools of fluorocarbon, the pocket spools, okay? Here's 250 yard spools more of them here, okay? And again, that's how you're typically gonna find fluorocarbon. You're not gonna find it in 3,000, 5,000 yard spools. It's just not gonna happen. I mean, certainly you can get it in, in giant spools, but you don't need to because you're just using it for leader material. But carry a lot of it, okay? A lot of it because you're gonna go through it. And every time the end of that leader is a little chafed, nicked, or abraded, cut a piece off, cut six inches off, cut 12 inches off, don't let tackle failure enter the equation. And that's universal across the board with all applications, really, really important. So those are the basic differences when it comes to the fluorocarbon versus the monofilament and making that decision as to what you should use. Now line size, that's another whole different animal, right? Look, we've got the 12 pound super clear that we fish on our light tackle yellowtail rods, okay? The, the, if we're refishing and we really need that stealth, maybe even mangrove snappers. And we can use that in the back country too for snook, trout, redfish. Although we like to fish braid in those venues and we'll discuss why in a second. I like to fish light. I go as light as I possibly can across the board within reason because the lighter the line, the more natural of a presentation. If I can get away with 20 pound test while I'm kite fishing for sailfish, I would rather do that versus 30 pound. There's less diameter in the air. The wind is gonna catch it less. My kite baits are gonna be much more natural. It's gonna be easier to fish. I'm gonna get more line capacity on the Talicas, you know, more line on the reels. So if one sailfish decides to go toward Cuba and another one towards Jacksonville, I don't ever need to worry about getting spooled. On the other flip side though, there are occasions where you want heavier line because you obviously don't want to get cut off, right? If you're trolling for, I don't know, yellowfin tuna somewhere, marlin somewhere, you certainly really don't want to fish something as light as 20 pound, you know, depending on where you're fishing and your skill level. We may bump it up to 40, 50, or even 80 pound mono. Again, really depends on the application. So it's very good to be a well-rounded angler with a lot of different line, um, but get away with, or try to get away with the lightest line that you can. Episode. We talked a lot about tackle, a lot about finding these fish, staying on them. Got it. All right, all right. Nice job. What a fish. Oh, yeah, that's a fat one right there. That's what we want. Oh, nice one. Look at that one. Got it. Nice. That's a tuna. That's what it's all about. Right there. Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about. Get him in the boat, ready? Oh, 
subscribe to your ride. You will never jeopardize losing a ride, ever. Now, let's get into braid, because that's a whole other subject right there and really, really equally as important. What are the benefits of braid over mono? Let's talk about that. Ultra thin, incredibly thin. You know, pound for pound, if I was talking about 30 pound braid versus 30 pound mono, you know, I'm not gonna say it's half or a quarter. I'm just telling you, it's a hell of a lot thinner, a lot. So I get a tremendous amount more line capacity on any reel. All of my jigging reels are all filled with braid. There's no question I'm fishing a smaller reel Okay, a smaller reel, may it be a Oshi, a jigger, you know, there's lots of options when you're jigging. It could be a tiny little Trinidad 14, okay, where I'm just getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards of braid on this small little compact package. And it's strong braid, 30 pound, 40 pound, depending on the application. Sometimes we go lighter when we're fishing ultra deep water and jigging, you know, for snowy groupers, tile fish, queen snappers, my deep water jigging outfits, my Oshia Jigger 4000s, even though it's a larger reel, and you may think that I would go with heavier line, on the contrary, I go with lighter line. I go from 30 pound to 20 pound. It's much thinner, it's incredibly strong. I get tremendous line capacity, so every time I turn that handle, there's still a lot of line on that reel, and it has the least amount of drag in the water. Now, braid, very little to no stretch. That means it's incredibly sensitive. Inshore venues, if I'm targeting redfish, snook, trout, bonefish, like we talked about earlier, I want that sensitivity. I could feel every move that little artificial bait makes. If I'm deep dropping, all of my deep drop rods, my beast masters are loaded with 40 pound diamond braid. Again, ultra sensitive, tremendous line capacity, very, very strong, abrasion resistant, but more importantly, very thin. You can see braid is available in countless colors. And I use different colors for different applications. The latest trend is yard line. It's, it's this diamond braid yard line. Every 50 feet is a different color, but they're only two colors, so they go back and forth. Whatever the combination is, it doesn't matter. What matters is every 50 feet is a different color. Now, why is that important? I'll give you an example. All of my Wahoo outfits, and you guys know I'm an avid Wahoo fisherman, all of my reels are loaded in that diamond yard line. Okay, so now when I'm setting my spread, I am very, very precise. There's no more guesswork. I am so dialed in, I can tell you right to the foot where that bait is. So I can set multiple lures behind the boat and never have to worry about anything crossing. You know, I could stagger baits exactly where I want them. But on all my Wahoo rods, on all my jigging rods, anytime that I'm fishing braid, I never, never tie directly to the hook, directly to the lure. I'm always adding a fluorocarbon leader. Here's just one of the many outfits that we're gonna be fishing tomorrow for snappers. It's a 6.6 six rod, little twin power, 5,000 reel Shimano workhorse, loaded with 20 pound diamond braid, but there it is right there. It's got that 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. And it's the same across the board. Regardless of what outfit I'm fishing, if it has braid, it has a fluorocarbon leader. If it has mono in a high vis color for trolling, for kite fishing, I have a clear fluorocarbon leader tied to the end of it. Even when I'm fishing with clear monofilament, the super clear line, when I'm targeting those, you know, really keen eyed yellowtail snappers, I still add fluorocarbon leader on top of the mono. 
Fresh bait is vital in today's highly pressured fisheries, and no one makes it easier to catch live bait than the Bally Hoop. With a complete line of collapsible hoop nets and accessories, the Bally Hoop is a must-have for every angler. Simply deploy the Bally Hoop and watch the magic. With the Bally Hoop, catching live bait is clean, fast, and simple. Ask for the Bally Hoop at your local tackle shop or visit us online to find a dealer near you. Super important that you also know the knots because not all knots are universal and the knots that you're using in monofilament line are not going to work with braid. Okay, they're not, they're just different characteristics with these lines. So it's vital that you're dialed in to the appropriate knots. Now look, in my particular case, as I mentioned, I'm tying fluorocarbon leaders to the end of braided line with the use of, of an Alberto knot. Most guys go seven up, seven down, and back through the hole. I go 13 down, 13 up, and back through the hole. Learn that knot. It's very simple to tie, and when you do it right, you can count on the Alberto knot. FG knot is another great knot for tying fluorocarbon leaders to braid. Little more complicated, little more time consuming, not as forgiving if you make a mistake, but if you get it right, it's bulletproof. When it comes to mono, I'm gonna tell you my favorite knot, and you may laugh at this right here, but is the improved clinch knot. It's a fisherman's knot. If you don't know how to tie a fisherman's knot, you shouldn't be watching Captain Mike's rigging station. Also understand that the heavier the line, the less times you're gonna need to go up. So for example, using an improved clinch knot with 20 pound mono, I may wrap it seven to 10 times before I go through the loop and back up through the loop I just created. If I'm tying 80 or 100 pound, five is all that I need. So the heavier lines don't need as many wraps as the lighter lines. Then of course you have crimps. Anything heavier than 100 pound, we're crimping those connections, okay? So you don't need a knot, you just need to know how to crimp. Now, something else that I should mention when it comes to braid, braid is available in hollow core, which basically means that the strands are not wrapped as tight. I'm gonna try and make this really simple to understand. Whereas a solid core, there's no hole in the middle. It's solid, it's tight. Hollow core, there's actually a hole, okay, right in the braid. Why? It allows you to insert your leader right there. Literally, the, the braid is hollow, exactly like what it sounds like. And you can insert that leader up into the hollow core and you can connect monofilament or braided line, or I'm sorry, fluorocarbon line to hollow core without any knots. However, it's a specialty type of scenario, and under the vast majority of cases, everything you're gonna be doing and I'm gonna be doing, we don't need hollow core braid, okay? The guys that are really dialed into big game fishing, sword fishing, marlin fishing, they use a lot of hollow core type braid products uh, that they incorporate these very, very seamless knots and connections into eight strand braid, nine strand braid. Look, there's a lot of different options out there. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the diamond braid and even diamond braid. They have a lot of different variations. This is the X9. This is really emerging is my favorite braid. It's just so thin, so smooth, and so strong. And that means I'm gonna get incredible cast stability. I'm gonna be able to cast lures so far I'm gonna have incredible sensitivity, but I have to stress that braid, even ultra thin braid, is incredibly strong as long as it's not damaged, okay? Don't 
let it get damaged. Those are very fine fibers, really, really fine fibers that go into, you know, making this braid. This is not one strand. This is actually, in this particular case, with the yard line, it's eight strands. There are eight little tiny strands that are wrapped, that are braided together to create that line. If even one of those strands gets frayed, nicked, abraded, or damaged, and you won't see it from the naked eye, zing pow, baby, you just have tackle failure. Some of the things you can do to avoid that, don't lean your rods up against concrete seawalls, uh, you know, anything abrasive like that that might scratch the line. Don't let that braided line touch the bottom of the boat or rub on anything that could potentially damage it because that's all it takes to create that weak link. And prior to every trip, when I'm prepping right here to get ready to go out and film, I know every bite matters, every fish matters. I'm peeling off some of that braid. Depending on how I use that rod and how often and what application, I may pull off 10 or 50 feet of braid, snip, retie a leader. Okay, that simple because that that end of that braid, that bitter end, that's what sees the most abuse, right? That's what's in the water the most, that's what sees the most abuse, cut it off and start over. It's not gonna cost you very much. It's, yeah, it might be a little time consuming, but how important is every fish to you? Connect with the crew on Instagram at Florida Sport Fishing TV. Catch our extreme seminar series at www.fsftv.com and get hooked up.